The release date of Princess Protection Program was May 20th, 2009. Wait a minute. So that's the sad thing about all of this is that Disney Loki kind of owns all these people and they're like not allowed to be let free of their leash for like who knows how long. That's just kind of how it was. They see them as like little bank accounts if that's kind of weird. I'll just go ahead and tell you what it is. It's about these kids that go to singing camp. Kids that go to singing and dancing in music camp. It's not a good movie. <laughs> hey y'all, it's Hariana and welcome back to The Pirate Ship. And if you're new here, welcome to The Pirate Ship, Harry Hook's Pirate Ship. I don't know what you're in for, but you're in for something. I am the captain. You are not my first mate. If you're new here, hello, my name is Hariana. And what I like to do over here, I like to make content based off of family and children entertainment and nostalgia and all the issues that are involved with those things. So yeah, I don't know what you're in for, but you're in for something. You're in for something, okay? I just like, y'all, I'm serving today. Like, I don't know. If only my nails was done, they'll ignore these, ignore these. But like, you can see the hook necklace in full frame. I got on my um Coco Jones merch. Um, I want y'all to see my braids too, cause I'm serving. And you would do it too for a check. I was an employee and I was going to be employee of the month. And that's on period. <laughs> but yeah, y'all really should be um, standing Coco Jones like I said um, in my um, Coco Jones video. Because the main reason why I put this on today is because there is something similar um, with the Coco Jones video that I made. That's going to be with this one. But before we get into that, you know, we have our few little announcements at first. Um, the progeny. As you guys know, I am the pro process of making my first web series it's actually my second web series but this is like my first like a big thing i'm in the process of making my first web series i'm writing it i'm acting it and i am the showrunner for it so yes we desperately need donations like we don't desperately need them but donations would be nice we would appreciate you guys could donate to our project so we can make it happen we're still going to make it happen regardless if we get the donations or not but just a little donation would be nice for us we really do appreciate every little dollar every little penny that you guys give us because it helps and also you guys watching my videos you guys even if you can't do like donate directly you watching my videos helps us fund the project so i am so so grateful for every single last one of you that clicks on my videos Next, we have Patreon. That is another way to support me on the Progenies. On the Patreon, I'm offering a service where I post exclusive content and behind-the-scenes footage of the Progenies. I have been posting scripts all week of what's expected for the season and whatnot. I have been posting behind-the-scenes of my life and things like that. Um, early access to all my videos. The Living Maddie video is over there live on the Patreon right now. It won't be posted on my channel for another two days. So if you want to see that, yeah, you get early access to a lot of my stuff over there. And also, I am going to be talking about the drama that is like TikTok drama. I know a lot of y'all be asking me to speak about TikTok drama. Um, yeah, TikTok drama is happening on the Patreon. So yeah, um, go on over to the harbor. That's what we call Patreon. And yes, it's all gonna be fun. It's a lot of fun over there. And you also get access to my Discord server too. So yeah, join the harbor if you can. Instagram and follow me on Tumblr. Those are free. Please, like, I'm really, I'm really trying to hit 7K on Instagram. I have already, like, Tumblr followers don't matter. But I, I don't know. I just like talking to you guys on Tumblr. Tumblr is like my favorite social media. So yeah. As I mentioned how I was wearing my Coco Jones sweatshirt, today's video is going to be a bit similar to that one and my Miley Cyrus videos because you guys actually really seem to like those videos and I had a bunch of those planned out because I have one planned about Hilary Duff and I had one planned for um, Lillian who was um, Miranda off of, what's that show called? What's that show Hillary Duff was on? Lizzie McGuire. I have a video planned about both of them, but it's just I never gotten around to filming them. I don't know why. It's just a lot of other stuff crossed my mind and I just kind of threw it to the side, but I kind of wish I did it now because like you guys truly do enjoy these little documentary style videos where I just talk about how Disney did them wrong. 
Because, you know, we are not Disney Hive over here. We may talk about Disney and whatnot. But y'all know, I have no desire to work for this company. I don't, like... I don't want to work for a company like this. This is why I'm making my own web series to fix the mess they created. Like, that's the reason why the progeny is happening. Because of the way they treated the black girls and the Asian girls in there, it's what's unacceptable. Remember, like, when I made my Miley video, a lot of you guys were asking me if I could talk about Demi. And I was like, you know what? Yes, I put it down in my notes along with all the other people, but I never touched it. So today I decided to dig it back up and you know what we're gonna do our little mini Disney documentary on Demi Lovato. So just a little trigger warning, a little content warning before we get started on the video. We will be talking about the subject of drug use and drug addiction addition addiction so yeah that's just a heads up like for those of you that are kind of um sensitive to those topics and I am aware that a lot of children watch me. Um yeah I do kind of recommend that kids watch me with their parents so they kind of am aware of the things that I'm saying like because I don't mean anything bad on kids I don't like to like feel like I'm telling kids lies or feeding them bad information I'm genuinely saying this stuff to help you but I do prefer if your parents watch this with you so you'll get a better grasp and understanding of what I'm talking about and also, like I said, parents need to start watching what their kids are watching. Like, I literally will not post something that I know a kid would like, like it would traumatize them or something. Like, something like real inappropriate, like the way a lot of these YouTubers act. I would never do that. Hey, we don't do that over here on The Pirate Ship. We protect kids over here on The Pirate Ship. Not try to hurt them. The Ace Family. All them little prank channels and whatnot. Like, no, y'all are not kid friendly like y'all say y'all are. Also, I am aware that Demi did not have the best childhood pre-Disney and the best life post-Disney, but because you guys know what my niche is and how we do these videos, my little Disney documentaries, we're just strictly going to be talking about her time on Disney and why I think Disney owes her an apology. I often heard rumors a lot when I was younger and even now and like throughout the years about what happened to her similar to what happened with like Alexa Nicholas and Coco Jones I would see people talking about them on the message boards and things like that where a lot of the rumors didn't end up being true but I re-watched um Demi's documentary so I can get a better grasp of what happened because I took her words from it like I did with Coco Jones and Alexa Nicholas I've heard things in the past about them but I strictly went to them to get my information and then give my feedback and my commentary on it so that we are doing the same thing today I am referencing Demi's documentary. It is on her YouTube channel right now if you guys are wondering where I got all this information from. And basically this documentary confirmed that a lot of those rumors on those message boards were true. The message boards were something else, okay? Like I said, I've mentioned this like numerous times. Like I used to be on the gossip sites when I was a kid. I I was a messy little child for who lived for drama. I knew about a lot of stuff that I should not have known about. I knew about what was going on with all the Disney Channel kids, all the Nickelodeon kids. Even like some of the Cartoon Network drama I knew about. That's how you know I should have been on Girls Go Games. I should have been on Everything Girl playing my scene dress up, which I was. But then, you know, um, um yeah. Yeah, I'm a prime example of why parents need to monitor what their kids are looking at on the internet. So basically it's like a lot of stuff on those message boards are like dark secrets that Disney tries to hide and they finally like blow up years later when their um, cast members announce what really happened and it confirms that a lot of that business is true. And it honestly truly hurts me that a lot of this information is true because we don't want all of this like bad stuff to be confirmed about them because all that stuff about why um Alexa Nicholas left Zoe 101, I didn't want that to be true because I was like nobody should have to go through that and then when it was confirmed I was like it makes you think that so many people in this industry are like secretly on the message boards I find that really kind of interesting but it also just goes to show you that like Hollywood is not as great as we think it is like I said I we need a I'm not gonna say that because YouTube might try to demonetize me for that 
I'll just say we need to make a new Hollywood. Let's make a new Hollywood. That's why I kind of always go towards projects that are in the independent range, independent filmmaking range, the indie music scene and things like that. Because Hollywood is really, really corrupt. Claims to care about their stars and it really annoys me how they pretend to be this company that promotes such goodness and whatnot. But like I said, go watch my Miley Cyrus video and go watch my Coco Jones video. That will literally kind of like change your mind if you have not been convinced already. Teen sensation Demi Lovato is having a great year. She performed at the Kids Inaugural Ball and met the Obama Girls. And she's also starring in the new Disney series, Sunny with a Chance. Good morning, Demi. Jonas Brothers, but you've yes. been on tour with them. What's it like touring with the Jonas Brothers? It's really fun. It really is. They're hilarious guys. And um, yeah, no, I love them. They're awesome. Now, you also have a new album coming out, don't you? I do. Well, I just came out with an album called Don't Forget back in September. And it seems like forever ago. But I'm already releasing the deluxe edition. So I'm very, very excited. It comes out in February. Basically, who is Demi Lovato? Demi Lovato is an American singer and actor and songwriter. She is like, got her start on Disney Channel. She started on a show called not saved by the bell as the bell rings as the bell rings i remember that jingle still even though i have not seen that show in years but yes demi lovato got her started on disney channel that was the first thing she ever did with the network she always started out like doing pageants and whatnot but like when she came to disney that was her debut it was basically a short series episodes were only between two to five minutes long which is probably why i don't remember what happened i remember one episode a dude got suspended no he got detention because he was running in the halls but it hey i think you threw this away by mistake yeah maybe you could stop by my house and i'll hang it up uh, absolutely i but i can't today oh right me neither i've, I've got, got detention. detention really me too <laughs> chewing gum in class uh, running in the hall it wasn't really a memorable show but it wasn't bad either it was just really cute it was just a show about like you know how you literally only have two to five minutes to go to your next class in the hallway and that is kind of like the only way a lot of people saw their friends in school that's literally what this show was it was just like the stuff that happened in the hallway between classes as the bell rings you like zoom out of your class to go talk to your friends that's what that show was pretty pretty cute because she ended up was Demi ended up getting other offers from Disney Channel so she ended up having to leave as the bell rings and they did replace her with another character it was funny because she was the lead on as the bell rings so but the thing about it is that that was like a short series nobody really kind of cared for it even though as the bell rings was her debut her like thing that like made Demi Lovato known and known was Camp Rock and if you don't know what Camp Rock is like I'll just go ahead and tell you what it is it's about these kids that go to singing camp kids that go to singing and dancing in music camp it's not a good movie like even by kids show standards Camp Rock is not a good movie you guys know that I hate Camp Rock if you would like for me to make a video called Camp Rock is a bad movie I will do that because it's just beyond terrible I'm not here to hate on Demi Lovato or anything Camp Rock just genuinely isn't good but you know it was like trying to be seen as like another high school musical type another cheater girls type so we ran with it we ran with it and I'm not gonna lie I love me some Camp Rock like at first when I was a kid and then like a year later I watched it I don't know I be learning real young when I don't like something I watched it again and I realized I only liked it because the Jonas Brothers were in it yeah Camp Rock did, did not age well it was never good to begin with she also starred in a movie called Princess Protection Program along with her best friend at the time. Best friend at the time. I don't know why I just slurred that so bad. Selena Gomez. Like, yes, everybody knew that Demi and Selena were like the BFFs of Disney Channel and whatnot. Robert Pines. <laughs> Zach Efron. <laughs> <laughs> she takes yeah, longer to totally. turn. <laughs> One time I came over to spend the night at her house and we were like 11. Her mom was like, okay, I'll wake the both of you up. And she goes to wake Selena up with literally five or ten minutes. I'm like, how do you do that? First I was like, no! <laughs> and they were able to get their own movie together called Princess Protection Program, where basically it was like just a witness protection movie with, with two teenage girls two completely opposite one grew up really privileged and rich demi the other one kind of grew up with a bad attitude middle class selena it's a cute kids movie 
not to sound rude or anything, but um, out of all of Demi Lovato's projects, aside from her music, because her music slept. When she was on Disney, her music slept. Um, Princess Protection Program was the only good thing she was in. The only good thing she was in, okay? Camp Rock sucked. Camp Rock 2 sucked even more. Sunny with a chance. We'll get there. We'll get there. Because I know y'all gonna drag me for that one. But like, Princess Protection Program was the best thing Demi Lovato was in, acting-wise, when it came to Disney. Like, it's a cute, decent, kids, girly movie. Really, really cute. Go turn it on to sleep over or something. It's, it's cute. Like, it's not bad. Then we got Sunny with a Chance. I'm pretty sure Sunny with a Chance came before um princess protection program but i'm not sure it's like in the same age range wait a minute we're doing a documentary i'm supposed to have my facts together hold on let's ask google let's ask google hey google what year did sunny with a chance come out 2009 according to wikipedia sunny with a chance is an american sitcom created by steve marmel which aired for two seasons on disney channel from february 8 2009 to january 2nd 2011 thank you google what year did Princess Protection Program come out? The release date of Princess Protection Program was May 20th, 2009. Wait a minute. So, you telling me Sunny with a Chance came out before Princess Protection Program? Hold up. Did it? Did. It came out like three months before Princess Protection Program. I could have, oh, but it, okay, Prince, Sunny with a Chance ran for like two years, then Princess Protection Program was just a one-time movie, that's why I kind of thought it came up before. Anyways, moving on, what exactly was Sunny with a Chance? Sunny with a Chance was a show about a girl that got like a role on a show located in Hollywood, and it was about her adjusting to the fancy, lavish lifestyle of Los Angeles. That's literally what Sunny with a Chance is. It had a colorful class of characters, like, yeah, you couldn't... Y'all really gonna hate me for this, but I did not like that show whatsoever. I like the show within the show better than the actual show, okay? I was not Sunny with a Chance Hive whatsoever. I was not here for it. I'm sorry. It just was not funny. It was really annoying. Like I said, I only liked it when it was sketch comedy. And that's saying something because I'm usually not a big fan of sketch comedy, okay? So, if you guys are interested in me making a video called Sunny with a Chance is a Bad Show, please comment down below, okay? I'm really curious to, like, see what you guys, how you guys feel about me making that. Anyway, this video is not here to talk about how I don't like the projects that she's in. I'm just really here to talk about what they did bad to her. But we have to give all the background information because a lot of this, like, what I'm saying, it's leading up to why, um, what happened happened. So, as we know, Sunny with a Chance was cut short. It was kind of strange because it ended after two seasons. So, during that time period, it was a little odd for a show to end at two seasons with Disney. The show within the show ended up becoming, like, the spinoff of the series called So Random. It literally was supposed to be, like, the third season of Sunny with a Chance. But they just decided to make it their own show called So Random. And it was just basically sketch comedy. I enjoy So Random way more than I did, um... Sunny with a Chance. It's like, they were a little bit more creative with the skits, I'd say, in So Random, if that makes sense. Um, they did have a lot of celebrity guest appearances, and that is how they were able to get a lot of their viewership. And they did have, like, a lot of musical performances, too. I remember Molly's Behavior performed on So Random. Like, y'all don't believe me, go look. Molly's Behavior performed on So Random. So, Disney Channel just kind of kept that under wraps. Like, as somebody that wasn't, like, always looking at the news and stuff like that, we really, like, kids, me, like, kids that were, like, my age, we really had no idea what was going on at the time. We were like, why did they just make it a completely new show? Why is Sunny not in the show? What is going on? So, I went to, like, my little fingers, went to the internet, on my little parents desktop at the time and um looked up what happened i wound it up on all the celebrity gossip sites um the message boards again i was very very scared because i everybody kept talking about drugs and things like that and i was just like no that's not my demi no that's not my demi it really didn't scare me it did kind of scare me but at the same time i was just like didn't want to believe it and i didn't believe it i thought it was just gossip because i remember my parents told me don't always believe everything you see on the news so yeah oh so here we go 
Demi Lovato said her first experience with drugs was when she was 17 years old. And it did happen with a few other Disney kids. So, yeah. 17 years old. And a lot of people like to say that she was high the entire time she did the first Camp Rock movie. And that was not true whatsoever. Demi was like 15 years old when they filmed the first Camp Rock. She said herself that she was not on, like she didn't touch cocaine or anything like that until she was 17 years old. So the first movie, like people were like trying to joke about how like Camp Rock is funnier to watch now that she, where I'm older because I know she was on drugs the entire time she was filming and I was like y'all that's not funny why are y'all using somebody's pain for your own laughter like it's different if it's your own pain and you're using that for your own amusement or whatnot but it's obvious that this woman has been through enough and y'all like what y'all assumed like this information is put out there y'all could have literally looked it up yourself knowing that she wasn't on drugs when this movie came out like the second one yes I can okay yes that is confirmed to be true but people were saying it about the first camp rock movie and i was just like no y'all are actually really really rude y'all are actually just really really rude and it's not funny people stay making jokes about it on tiktok and whatnot and i'm just like you can roast camp rock but do not bring demi's drug addiction and mental illness into it okay it's just not the way to go to it it's not the way to go about it so this wasn't one thing that was in the documentary, but I remember it like um, reading about it years ago, is that Disney told her to fix her gap in her teeth. And that really did bother me because there's literally nothing ugly with gap teeth. There's nothing ugly about it whatsoever. And it is frustrating and it, it was kind of hurtful to see that they did that for her to her because like me as being a kid that loved Disney Channel and always wanted to be on it, just knowing that they would have wanted me to change that about myself really, really does hurt me. And I'm just, we need to see like more realistic teeth on camera in Hollywood, okay? Like people have gap teeth, okay? It's normal. It happens. There's literally nothing ugly about it. So at this time, because of all of everything that was going on, she was Disney's it girl. She was that girl. Like, it's debatable. We were talking about the real queen of Disney. I feel like there were multiple, multiple queens of Disney, and Demi was one of them the time of her making like all these shows and being in all these movies she was also making music and also being on tour remember Demi is like 15 16 17 when all of this going on she is a child she is a teenage girl so imagine all that pressure on a like that's a, a lot for an adult to handle so imagine how that was on a freaking child okay it's a lie remember you have to keep in mind how young she was okay like even so many adults nowadays can't even handle that because I know I can't handle that I know I filmed one movie and I need a break for another month okay I need a break not like a whole month I need a break from filming a movie, but I'm gonna need some time off, okay? So her being super duper busy like this, how Disney had her busy like this, this was before she started doing drugs. And later on, because it was just so much for her to handle, her being able to cope with it all, she turned to drugs. And mind you that, like, she's just strictly working for Disney at this time. I know, like, she um, could be working with people outside of Disney or whatnot. But, like, Disney was, like, the main person that was, like, running the show, okay? Disney, like, literally owned her. That's the sad thing about all of this is that Disney low-key kind of owns all these people. And they're, like, not allowed to be left free of their leash for, like, who knows how long. And, like, me being somebody that is an actor and a writer, and you know, I'm a freaking blogger or whatnot. Like, yeah, like me being like a creative turning down work when you get it is like a bad thing it is like a bad sign it's like she turned down all those great opportunities that she was getting because she wanted to calm down and focus on her health or take a break or whatnot it's like not possible like literally everything would be snatched away from you that's why so many actors don't really take breaks it's that's why they're like work work don't stop work work don't stop like it's just like they legit can't or like their career is gonna flop like if you're wondering why so many artists nowadays like i'll even take megan the stallion how we know she ended up having the accident this year why do you guys think she's still working why do you think she's still consistent and whatnot because she knows if she takes a break she's probably not gonna have that audience or that money or those opportunities again or at least not for a while or it might take her a little bit more time to get those people back interested in her 
like yeah that's why you see why so many youtubers upload constantly throughout the years um, like some people upload almost every day like just knowing how like the business works like not just even entertainment like you see the social media business like how it is you you have to kind of like keep working to make sure you stay relevant to make sure you're still making that income like it's really sad it's really really stressful situation was similar to Miley's but it wasn't exactly the same as Miley's because yes like they did have people like bothering them and whatnot they did like Disney was trying to force both of these women no they were girls at the time but Disney was forced first forcing both of them to like be role models when they didn't want to they just wanted to be a normal teenage girl like teenage girls cuss okay that's one thing a lot of people don't want to say teenage girls freaking cuss like sailors okay teenage girls be cussing more than a lot more people out here okay teenage girls freaking cuss but what made Demi's situation so different than Miley's is because Miley came from a famous family and Demi didn't. So they weren't always up in her business the way they were with Miley. She still had so much pressure from Disney that um, they ended up kind of like dealing with it all like in separate ways kind of, I'd say. And it's affected both of them similarly but like also differently at the same time. Like how much Disney wanted to change her and all the pressure that they put upon her it really took a toll on her when she felt like she needed to change her appearance and everything. Like during this time period, she did develop bad depression to the point where she would just be asleep all day and she ended up having like really bad anger issues and she was later diagnosed with bipolar disorder. There was an incident when there was like on a Camp Rock tour where she ended up throwing this really, really wild party. She was on drugs. It just got really, really out of hand. It was extremely crazy yeah and somebody ended up telling her parents about it and whatnot and no i am not making up excuses for what she did because yes what she did was wrong i will sit here and say that she was wrong but putting into consideration about everything that has led up to this event you just kind of can't help but feel bad for her when that party happened and the events at that party happened because after that she ended up fighting one of her backup dancers that's when people figured out that something wasn't right about Demi and that's when they figured out that's when all like the drug use was happening. All the pressure that she was dealing with with Disney, her childhood trauma, and all the stress and whatnot, it just really kind of took a toll on her. Her turning to drugs was just kind of like her way of dealing with it all. That is why I think Disney owes Demi Lovato an apology, okay? That is why I think they owe Demi an apology. Because my issue with Disney is that they they try to parade around like they're this happy, helpful network. When that, it's like, it goes way beneath that. It goes way beneath that. Because, like, Disney is this company that, like, promotes, like, happiness and self-care and things like that. You see them freaking commercials. How they don't got real commercials. Them made-up commercials that they got on there. But, like, behind the scenes, like, those people are suffering. Those people are really freaking suffering. Like, all they care about is the money. They see these people as objects. They see them as, like, little money makers. And they're like, here, um, you're going to do this and that and the third and the third and whatever. And you're going to make me my money. That's just kind of how it was. They see them as, like, little bank accounts, if that's kind of weird. But they knew, like, exactly what they were doing, putting all this pressure upon a teenage girl. Like, that is just so much for one person to handle. So, like, don't be surprised when, like, the negative happens out of that. Like, people always be trying to talk about how child stars are going crazy and things like that. And I was like, I kind of don't like how people use the phrase that child stars go crazy once they leave. And I'm like, no, it's because they've been through so much during that time period of when they were working with the specific network or just working as a freaking child. Like, I have so many opinions about, like, children working in the industry and things like that. It's like, it's just trauma and it's just kind of like the way they're dealing with it and they don't always make the best decisions. Like, I don't like it when people always have this narrative about kids, stars, growing up crazy and I was just like, that's not... You can never really predict the decisions that they're going to make for themselves. Like, it's just really, like, it It goes way beyond that, okay? It's a lot about, like, and it does have to do with, like, having freedom, too. They overwork Demi Lovato to the point where she turns to drugs to deal with it all. And that is why I think Disney owes Demi Lovato an apology. So in conclusion, capitalism. Yeah, we blame capitalism. So yeah, um, woo. Thumbs up for more documentary videos on Disney stars or Nickelodeon stars. Anyone?
yeah because a lot of you guys were really interested you like a lot of y'all have been wanting me to talk more about disney drama and whatnot like from that era and i did say i was going to talk about that more and i just didn't go back to it like i spoke about like keely williams and things like that yeah the keely williams video y'all should watch that one that is actually one of my favorite videos i've ever made but yeah it's like you would do it too for a check it's that just kind of like feeds into this whole thing like the things they did for money and it stayed relevant and whatnot it's actually really really sad it's actually very very sad but yes thank you guys for watching this video i really do appreciate every single last one of you i love you guys don't forget to follow me on everything don't get to follow me on instagram and tumblr for free please subscribe on patreon if you want to to see more of me and have access to my discord and whatnot please support the progenies you guys are already supporting the progenies if you made it to the end of this video love you and i thank you and yes have a good night Cherishing power, puff two of a kind Both wanna save the world before